People tend to think in black and white terms when it comes to economic theory. Either you're a capitalist or a communist. But believe it or not, these ideologies don't have to exist on a singular thread. Governing structures can be borrowed from different beliefs to form a new system. One philosophy that practices this blend is called Georgism. And its basic tenet is that land should be the primary source of public revenue, with all other taxes eliminated. Having a lot of questions over how this concept could be successfully applied in society, I was joined earlier by Scott Baker, president of Common Ground NYC. I first asked Baker if elimination of all taxes except a land use tax could really generate enough revenue to sustain government. Yes, well, Michael Hudson and uh, Mason Gaffney and Nick Tiedemann and Fred Harrison and a few other economists have studied this. Uh, they believe that uh, land is about one third of the GDP. Uh, or a little bit more even. And so if you do tax that and you untax everything else, it does provide enough revenue for a reasonably sized government, uh, it's, as long as it's run efficiently, of course. How does Georgism prevent monopolization and address wealthy individuals and corporations being able to outbid their less wealthy counterparts on the land? Yes, well, basically the idea is that uh, you wouldn't uh, have so much absentee ownership and you wouldn't have hoarding of land because there's a price to pay for that. You'd be paying a tax. And if you don't use the land efficiently, uh, for example, 6 to 8 percent of New York City land is vacant, according to the Department of Finance, and depending on how you count it. Um, so if you don't use that efficiently, uh, then uh, you know, you're going to be paying a penalty, essentially. Uh, so this ends urban sprawl, and it ends suburban sprawl. And uh, it, it really. Uh, puts people closer to the center and makes them use land more efficiently. Um, what, what it doesn't do, one of the fears is that it would take away all the park land. That's not really true because people want to live near a park and so they're willing to pay extra for that so that just becomes more valuable land. Um, but it does break up the monopolies and the hoarding and, and uh, all of these little, uh, for example, McDonald's that has one story uh, properties and, and basically pays very little uh, property tax or or parking lots, as we have a lot of in New York, or we used to, uh, where they pay one-tenth the property tax of the building next door to them. And I've seen actual examples of this. Uh, land ownership is a concept that's so ingrained in U.S. society since its inception, pretty much. I mean, how do you expect to convince property owners to give up their land? I, I don't. I mean, they would have full legal ownership of the land. We have no interest in doing anything about that. We, we want people to have full legal ownership. and. Uh, we're only talking about economic uh, rights, and, and we say that the, uh, the property tax, which first of all is two taxes, it's a tax on buildings and a tax on land, we want to make it only a tax on land, and uh, we want to collect that for the public good, but we're not interested in, in uh, taking over people's land or making it uh, uh, public land, because if we do that, then people won't have any incentive to improve it anyway. So we, we want people to uh, own land and have full rights to it. Um, but we feel that the, uh, the, the value of the land uh, should be uh, determined by the market and the, uh, the value should go back to the public purse. Okay, okay well, let's... Uh, let's you know, you can take... Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to say one, one argument against the philosophy that I was reading online is that, let's say, okay, the value of the land determined by... Uh, that determines the price. Uh, the rent would go down on pieces of land that, let's say, corporations own, um, that they're just polluting incessantly on that land. I mean, what incentive do they have to not pollute if that's what's well, going to make the land of, value be less? Well, part of what modern Georgism incorporates is what's called Pigovian taxes, which are uh, essentially taxes on pollution and uh, despoilation of land or air or water, which under classical definition is part of land. Uh, so that if they do uh, put pollution into something that basically belongs to all of us, they also have to pay a tax on that as well. So it's in their best interest not to pollute because they'll have to pay more money for that. So uh, it, it, we don't uh, look at it as a point uh, where they can despoil the land and make it worthless. We, we say what is the maximum best use of that land and anything that's uh, uh, taking away from that uh, basically is is something that we would tax and uh, and and uh, we would take a, take that back. Karl Marx famously called Georgism capitalism's last ditch. Criticized the philosophy as something that would not only preserve capitalism's domination but expand it. How do you respond? Yeah, well, this is the interesting thing. You know, Henry George was no friend of uh, 
Karl Marx or his philosophy and, and vice versa. Uh, so sometimes people accuse uh, Georgism of being communism and it's, it's uh, actually funny because it's almost the opposite. It's, it's laissez-faire in terms of, of uh, uh, production and, and people keeping whatever they produce for themselves. Uh, but on the other hand, we are uh, somewhat aligned with Marx uh, in terms of uh, taking the economic rent. And, and even he agreed that, uh, you know, we, that property owners should pay the rent on the land back into the community. Uh, so it's funny because Adam Smith and Karl Marx and Henry George all agree on that point, although they emphasize it uh, to different degrees. Right, but, but, but go on the capitalism critique of what he said about that aspect of it. Well, it's not, we'd, I guess in a way it's, uh, it's not a last ditch, but it would certainly uh, be a way of saving capitalism from imploding because of the extreme wealth inequity that we see that's uh, causing destabilization all over the world. Uh, you know, Oxfam just came out with this report that 85 people have as much wealth as the bottom half of humanity, three and a half billion. Uh, this is an untenable, unsustainable situation. It causes revolutions, riots, and, and even when it's not doing that, it's just inefficient and, and uh, unsustainable. Uh, so we say uh, the, the reason that there's so much wealth so concentrated primarily is because of monopoly on land. Uh, now, within our Georgist uh, GOS community, we also argue about monopoly on money and whether that should be included. And happily, George also agreed that uh, money uh, should not be the exclusive creation of banks. He said it was too important to be left to the banks. So uh, he believed that government should also uh, produce the money as well. Scott Baker, president of the Common Ground, New York City. Thanks. Back to them. Need to speed up this process. David, thank you so much. David Seaman, really appreciate you coming on. And you guys, that is our show. Join me again tomorrow when I break the set all over again.